This week on the program, we are honored to introduce you to a young agribusinessman who is boosting the life of rural communities and young farmers in northern Nigeria. His name is Usman Lawan, and here is his story. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to Osefa Integrated Farms. So we have um, the first tank we had was 7,000 liters, but then soon enough we realized we needed more tanks. So we got um, 6,000 more. So to the left and to the right we have 3,000 liters each. When we first got um, here, we saw that the community, they had a major problem of water. So where they get water from is something about um, 5 or 10 kilometers away from here and it's a stream. During the dry season, it gets worse because the water becomes dirty and it's not drinkable. Because we have um, our borehole here, I decided, okay, why not do something for the community too? And um, since uh, then, we give them about 10,000 liters of clean water every week. So what we do is every Tuesday or Wednesday and then on Fridays, they come here and take between four and 5,000 liters. So everybody in the community is allowed to come in and take the water free. What this has done for us is that it has helped to integrate us into the community. They see our project as part of their community, but most importantly, it helps us to solve the problem of water, contaminated water and airborne diseases, and waterborne diseases that they have around here. And over here, if you look, that's where we have the laying beds. That's um, not, uh, the, this is just a temporary pen anyways. Uh, I will show you where the permanent site will be and how it will look like. But in the interim, this is where we have the laying beds. So when we started, originally this was supposed to be where the staff house would be. But then after a while, I realized I was taking the project too big at a time. And so we said no to cut it and start um, little by little. That's how we converted this place into a penthouse. So this penthouse here has a capacity of 1,500 beds. And uh, right here on the cage, we have 1,200 um, pullets. What are your aspirations in terms of uh, kind of productivity, maybe say by the end of the year, for example? So um, I would show you what we're doing outside um, later. Our aspiration is to grow the farm into it in 1,000 beds capacity, 40,000 grow up fish, as well as rabbit and poultry. But the biggest for me is to um, complete the building and also begin and transfer and metamorphose into a full-blown agribusiness school. Yeah, what we want to do is to be able to help raise an army of young agripreneurs, people who are going to help solve the, pro the hunger problem of Nigeria, Africa, and the world. Nigeria's population is going to grow into about 350 million people by the year 2050. Currently, Nigeria spends about $6.8 billion on food importation. I think that's massive. If we continue at the rate that we produce food today, by the year 2050, who is going to feed Nigerians? And this is not only about Nigeria, it's about Africa, it's about the world. By 2050, the world population will grow into 9.6 billion people. At the rate of food that we produce today, we'll only be able to produce 50% of what is needed. And so I realized, no, we can go big, we can do more. But most importantly, we can help build an army of young people who will help to provide the food that we need when the time comes. Because for me, this space is too big. I don't see competition here. I see collaboration. And that's why we're aspiring to become an in the innovative enterprise center that will help in building an army of young people who understand the business of agriculture. I like to say certificate, not certificate. Out of every 10 farms that open in Nigeria, eight close at the, first, at the end of the first year. And this is a terrible thing. So you go around here, even right behind me here, we have a farm which has the capacity of about 12,000 beds. It's closed. And I believe that one of the major reasons is because people lack the knowledge to run agribusiness. 
you know, there's this story about um, farming is a good business, the government is talking about farming and people just jump into it without really understanding what it takes to be a farmer, how to run a proper farm. And that's why I believe that um, the gap, the knowledge gap between, you know, the classroom teaching and the actual practice of agribusiness needs to be bridged. And that's where our Innovative Enterprise Centre will come in. So we focused more on rural farmers, people who are actually into the farming business, as well as trying to build a young army of fresh graduates who would see that farming is not just a, um, a poor man's business, but it's also something that you can earn money with dignity from. You see the birds are only 18 weeks old as at yesterday, but look at the size of egg we already have. Hopefully if you come here in another two or three weeks, when they, are, they should be around 20 or 21 weeks, all of the cage will be filled with eggs. Yeah. And the interesting thing also is the fact that our system is purely organic. What is your target if you look at the next five, ten years in terms of uh, egg production? In the next five years, we see ourselves producing up to 300 crates of egg every day. Yeah, also producing about 3,000 tons of um, poultry chicken meat every week. Yeah. We hope that in the next five years we'll begin to have um, sales outlets in um, every part of Abuja and maybe even outside Abuja. That's the whole objective. And we also hope that in the next five years we would have raised about um, 5,000 people who are fully trained um, in agribusiness. Growing his integrated rabbit, fish and chicken farm, sustainability is Usman's watchword. Based on our interest on trying to teach young people and also to be able to start small. The rabbit farming is one good way to do that because with um, a little capital of between 20,000 and 50,000 naira, you can start a rabbit farm. And they reproduce like um, massively. A rabbit can give you between six to um, up to 12 liters, depending on the species and the breed. And uh, they will also produce every two months. You know, you're, you're involved in such a diverse range of, of products. Yeah. Because of that, I, I want to ask you, when you look at the Nigerian situation uh, as it relates to agribusiness, mm -hmm. what do you think are some of the opportunities, and in some cases missed opportunities in the sector? Something very peculiar about the Nigerian agribusiness sector is that the vast majority of people practice smallholder farming. It's very difficult for you to see a farmer in Nigeria who owns up to 10, 000, uh, 10 hectares, for instance. So you have a vast majority of people who own between 2 hectares to 3 hectares. These people do not have the finance. These people do not have the finance to be able to afford, for instance, a combined harvester or a tractor. What they are able to do, though, is to use small handheld tools or, you know, small mechanized tools. So when you talk about mechanization in the Nigerian agribusiness sector, people think about the tractors, people think about the combine. That, I think, in my opinion, would not work. What we want is that we want to be able to give the farmers small handheld mechanical tools or even motorized tools. For instance, um, treasures, shredders, that a farmer can be able to afford. If um, he puts in, say, maybe um, five liters of fuel, it will be able to serve his two-acre farms, for instance, or um, a mechanical handheld tool. I'll show you one later. It's called the green cedar hand planter. This tool, you, it's, it has the same shape like the, the cutlass or the stick that people use in planting. But it's not only used for planting. You can also use it to apply mid-season fertilizer. And um, talking about GMO, you see the technology thing, it's good. I mean, I like it, but I don't think that's the problem with Nigeria. I'll give you a simple example. Be depending on what crop you look at, between 40 to 60% of all the agricultural produce in Nigeria goes to waste. Simple example, take the tomato for instance. Nigeria is the second largest producer of tomato in Africa. And about 60% of all the tomato that we produce in this country goes to waste, simply because we do not have the technology to preserve it, and logistics and transportation is terrible. People are not able to take their produce to markets. Now, if you bring GMO tomato, for instance, or if you bring um, you know, um, hybrid tomato, for instance, you in increase the production of the farmers. How do they manage it when they are not even able to handle what they have? The bad side, Nigeria is also the world's largest importer of tomato paste. So how do you connect this? We're importing about 150,000 metric tons of tomato paste every year. Yet we waste almost about 60,000 metric tons of tomato, fresh tomato, in the Nigerian uh, agricultural system. I think, I think that we need to be able to um, um, you know, put farmers into clusters 
and also be able to help them acquire small handheld tools, whether it's motorized or mechanical, something that helps increase their productivity and improves their livelihood, but also improves the entire agribusiness value chain. These birds here, they're only four weeks old, but they're already weighing one kg. And like I keep saying, we pride ourselves as um, practicing purely organic farming. You see, you will see that there's no smell here. Simple reason is because we use ginger to reduce the ammonia level in the droppings. Fantastic. And of course, we keep our litter very clean. This helps us to um, reduce any secondary disease incursion. So you see, this should show you how active the beds are.